I wanted to do just a little video on HTML, just the basics of HTML and looking at HTML5 because it's a lot simpler to work with. It's really important to get a good handle on the basics because when you get to the part where we're coding things on the back end, you need to be able to uh, uh, generate on the fly good HTML that will go out to the web uh, clients. If you don't understand the basics and how HTML all fits together, then that becomes a bit of a problem or a bit more of a challenge because it's now abstracted from you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually build a basic document, a very basic document with just some features in it so that you can see what are the parts that need to be there in an HTML document. Now, there can be all kinds of things that we can do with HTML. In fact, we can make it very pretty. We create all kinds of links within it. That hypertext means that it has links that allow us to access services, go to other web pages. Markup means that we are taking a document and we're adding in markup uh, features, these tags that will allow us, uh, allow the browser to render it properly and also gives us the flexibility to format it in the way that we want. HTML is the place where we need to start. So all HTML documents have one really important thing, and that is they have to have kind of a wrapper around them to say this is an HTML document. So you do that with two things. First, you're going to tell it what kind of document you're using. And for HTML5, that's been made really simple. You just say doc type, it's an HTML document. And then you're going to say, this is my HTML document. And always a tag will need to be closed. So the first one is a descriptor. And so descriptors and comments and things like that are special cases, but inside the HTML itself, which is this part right here, inside there, that is the document. We're going to put that inside there. So the first thing we need is kind of big wrapper around it. And then inside that document, and I'll use indents to make it look nice, inside we need to have two parts. So this is, the first part is the wrapper. The second part is the head. And so I'm going to quickly close that off so that I know that something goes in between the opening tag and the closing tag. And that something are, is all the information that is about the document. So in here we have the most common thing is title. Um, my web page. And I have to close that tag. So if I put my web page, and that will actually put it up in the tab in Chrome or in the title if we have other web, web browsers. But this isn't on the page itself. This is at the head of the page. So you think about the head is on top of the body, and we're all within this HTML framework. So you, you can't put the head outside of the HTML. You can't put the head inside the next part, you put the head on its own, and then on, and, and the head sits on top of a body. Just, just like, kind of like a person. So I like to go here, and I like to close it at the end, so that I know that all this space in here is going to be the body. And the body is what gets shown on the page itself. The head is information about the page. The body is the information that gets displayed and all the formatting for that. So we'll see just a few tags in here. So just to go back up to the head, I'm going to do a couple of things here. So one, one of the things that I can do is for these tags, I can actually give them some attributes. And so we'll, one that I give to the whole document um, that makes the... Uh, validator happy is I tell it what language this page is in. And so there's two letter codes. Uh, EN for English is the one that we want there. And the other thing that I may do here, um, I don't need to do this, but I can also go in and add some metadata. So the one I like to add to my documents is the metadata author. So what I do is I put name equals 
um, author and then content equals and then I'll say Frank Emanuel because tags need to be closed it is actually good practice because you're going to need this when you do XML later on it's good practice to put in a space and then a slash to close off the tag so it's a so it's a tag that just has information and and one thing to notice about this is the name um, is like the name of a variable so it's how we get to that content it's a standard representation so on any page if it has an author field or metadata then I can go looking for it with my scripting code and say oh I want to do something with that um, or I want to go search for all the ones that the content of the author field is Frank Emanuel find all my pages so this this becomes useful data for me so I like to kind of give a little space in around that and in fact I like to put comments in here and so comments in um, HTML looks like this so inside this oh and you know what I've done here which is interesting is if I save this as this is a new template dot HTML then it will color code for us so in here I'll just say the head uh, the head contains the title of the page as well as some meta data about the page if I have more than one line what I like to do is I like to have it so it's all indented the same and you one thing about HTML is it, it ignores every, every space after the first one so I can use lots of space but as long as I have that opening and that closing tag everything in there is treated as comments and so in mine it's turned green the body of the page contains all of the information to be displayed uh, and all of the tags needed I'm going to go like this to make it nice needed to format the information. So I just like to have comments in my code to remind me what a section of code does. It's a very good practice. If you ever work on a large um, development project and you you're going to regret working with anybody who doesn't comment their code because it is a pain to not be able to go through and go oh that's the section I'm looking for in here I have a whole bunch of different things one of the ones that you will be looking at is I can have a header so I have different header levels I would recommend that you adopt a standard and use for the tag itself um, I like to use uppercase and then for any kind of properties that I'm adding to that tag I like to use lowercase that way I can quickly look through my code and say oh that's a property oh that's the tag oh I didn't close that tag oh uh, ooh, I that property needs I need to have the double quotes around everything so I can quickly see what might be wrong within my code clean coding is so much easier to work with uh, this is my web page and then you need to close the tag so that's that's that and then I can have some information here uh, my web page is a very nice web page you know page um, you might like to see my web page but it is not on the internet so so that is a bit of a problem now I'm doing this sorry because I want you to see something that even though I've spaced this out nicely 
HTML is a markup language and only recognizes the first space. So this new template.html. Okay, so notice all of that text that I wrote, even though I put it up, uh, I spread it out, it's all put together nicely. So the thing about it is, that's nice about it is that I can spread on everything and make it very readable for me as a coder. But when it renders it, I have to remember that it's going to ignore every space after the first one. If I really want to, I have to put some kind of tag in there to move it down to the next line. And so if I do that, you'll see when I regenerate it, sorry goes down to the next line because I put a break tag in. And I use the break tag because it's one of those exceptions to the rule. The break tag does not need to be, uh, we don't need to close it. We just can insert it. Uh, and we can actually get away with that in a few tags, but it's better to actually go in and put paragraph tags around things. And this will be very helpful for us later because by putting paragraph tags around things so that they become their own paragraphs, we can, within our CSS later on, uh, we can actually dictate how those paragraphs look. And that becomes just so much better. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go like this. And remember, you always have to close your tags. Now, I also want to do some things like I'm going to bold this. So um, strong is a tag that allows me to bold a word and it needs to be closed. Oh, whoops. I If I put strong on a header, not the one I meant to do, uh, the header is already bolded. So it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to take the strong off and I'm going to move move it down actually here. Very nice web page. Ah. And I'm going to go over here and and I'm going to put M, which is emphasis, to another tag, which simply puts it in italic. So let's just save that and take a look at what we have done. You see the paragraph tags move things down. You'll notice the internet is now in italics and web page is bolded. And I can do all kinds of things within basic HTML. Uh, if I want to make problem a tag, something, a hyperlink that gets me somewhere, I can say uh, A, which is the anchor tag. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to go A. Now, when I render this, because I just want you to see that it's the A is the tag. Oh, that would have been bad. Okay, the A is the tag part, and it means anchor. Problem is now an anchor, but it doesn't do anything. So I need to tell it what to do as an anchor. And so the most common thing that you'll be doing is going and turning it into a hyperlink. So oh, we're going to do that by giving it a reference, so an attribute. And this reference is going to be a website. Uh, so HTTP uh, colon slash slash. Um, we want to go www.algonquincollege.com. But now you'll see there's an underline. And when we click on it, it actually goes to Algonquin College's web page, which is not really a problem, but it's a problem on there. So just a few things just to get you to see in an, in an HTML document, you have a wrapper that tells you what kind of a document it is. So and it will have an HTML and a closing tag at the bottom that wraps around the entire HTML document. And then you'll have within it a head and the head sits on top of a body. Don't put your body inside your head or your head inside your body. You can't breathe. It just doesn't work. 
you want to make sure that those things are in the proper order. But those are both within the HTML, so those are the three things you need. And the head is not displayed, although there is a title that we can put at the top. It says, My Web Page. That came from the head, the title. Uh, and then we have all the content and all the formatting for it. So there's lots of little things that you can learn, tons of tags that you can learn. But that is the basic structure that you need to understand.